What is a secret that you will never tell anyone? Before we start with the first story, please hit subscribe and ring the notification bell to stay updated with us. Story 1. All hail the chemistry teachers. I missed the class where we did our coursework practical that went towards our final grade. Teacher told me to come after school one day to do it. I was crap at chemistry. I showed up, sat down, and waited for him to come back to the classroom with the equipment so I could set up and start. Instead, he walks in with a piece of paper. He drops it on my desk, tells me not to get 100, and goes back out the room. Dude had given me the answer score. I made myself get a 90 to get in the highest grade bracket and ended up with AB overall. Thanks Dr. Bingham, you were a real one. Story 2 about a week before I graduated high school, my family had a massive house fire. We lived out in the country, and no one was home, so by the time anyone noticed it was on fire, it was way too far gone. Thirty-foot flames above the roof. We lost everything, but had insurance, and no one got hurt. Anyways, I was in a chemistry class at the time that around 70% of the grade centered around a lab notebook that was graded all at once at the end of the semester. You would do labs every week, and then do lab write-ups in the notebook. I had been slacking off and was way behind on the assignment and would have had to pull a few all-nighters just to turn something in. The day after the fire I went into class and told my teacher that the notebook had gone up in the fire and that I had no idea how I would ever turn the assignment in. He was extremely nice about it, told me not to worry, and gave me 100% on the whole assignment just said that I had bigger things to worry about and was about to graduate and that he hoped my family was doing okay. Well, the notebook was in my car the whole time. Threw that bitch away and swore myself to secrecy. Story 3. When I was in elementary school, I once lost something so I asked to go to the lost and found. In the lost and found room, which was a big storage closet, they also stored the Cokes for the pop machines. I took one. Then, probably three to four times a week, I'd remember I lost something else and go steal another Coke. I don't know how long I did this for, but I got a lot of free Coke. Story 4 One Christmas I was nine years old and knew that Santa wasn't real, but for my seven-year-old brother the fantasy was very much alive and good. We shared a room and my brother woke up on Christmas morning and looked confused that Santa had not eaten the Kit Kat that had been left out. He went quiet and I could see that he was working the facts through in his head. When he wasn't looking I ate the Kit Kat and showed him the wrapper and claimed he imagined seeing the wrapper unopened. This was 26 years ago and I have not told him in case he works out Santa isn't real. Story 5 When I was in high school a friend confided in me that they had problems with cutting. Showed me recent marks. We had a long talk. I went to the counselor of the school and told them a couple days later. I was a teen. I struggled with the choice, but ultimately the fear of losing my friend won. Long story short, they ended up in a mental facility for a month and came back, absolutely baffled as to who ratted him out. Decided it was probably a different friend. Well, I married him. He still doesn't know. Story 6 About 20 years ago, I worked for a big publisher. They were upgrading all their tech and just dumping it in a skip. I asked the security guy if I could take some stuff from the skip and he said to help myself as it was all going to get crushed anyway. During a night shift I filled up my car with a beige G3 slash Quadra Apple Max, keyboards, mice and some 19 inch format screens. Some of the Macs had Quark Express and Photoshop on them. I cleaned them up and sold them. I made enough to buy a G4 Quicksilver of my own which I still have today. I didn't tell my co-workers, ex-wife, managers, or anyone else. Story 7 My mom left me to be homeless while still in high school to move out of state with an abusive, to me, new husband. When I finally got back in touch with them three years later, they gifted me one of his prized possessions, a car. It was kind of an olive branch. Problem was as a barely 20 year old with a minimum wage job living in DC, I couldn't afford to plate it, inspect it, insure gas or taxes on it nothing. Still full of hatred for this man and therefore somewhat out of spite. I sold it to a co-worker friend whose big family desperately needed it for probably 10% of what it was worth. 
told my stepdad and mother that I got in an accident and it cost $400 to tow and my insurance only covered blah blah. It's been 11 years. Story 8. When I was 9, my dad and I were reading Reader's Digest and found a magazine subscription card for a free case of Depends adult diapers, so we wrote my uncle's name and address down and put it in the mailbox. He got it a couple weeks later and called everyone in the family to find out who it was. We knew my uncle was fuming, so we kept it to ourselves. To this day, everyone suspects that it was my other uncle. Story 9 I worked as a medical assistant in the early 90s. Right out of school, at my first job, the doctor was a screamer who would yell at us in front of patients, call us names, make us work during our breaks, etc. But the worst thing he did was make us work overtime at the regular hourly rate, $6 an hour then. So one day I told the office manager, who was also the doctor's wife, that someone had called from the state wage board and said they were investigating a complaint from a former worker about non-payment of overtime. The mandatory overtime stopped and if we did have any, it was paid at the time and a half rate. Bonus I got to hear the doctor and wife bish and curse about it and wonder which ex-employee did it. There was a lot of turnover, so that was fun. Story 10 I used to work in a shopping center. One time, as I was walking into the building, I sneezed and totally crapped myself. I was about 10 steps away from the shop, so I had to think fast. I took a hard left turn and walked directly into a department store. I only had $5 on me, so I beelined for the underpants section and got the cheapest pair I could find. I then had to go to the center toilets and sort everything out. It was a real mess. I texted my boss and told them I was stuck in traffic, but in reality I was 100 meters away trying to salvage any shred of dignity I could for the next 20 minutes. I'm happy to say the mission was a success and that day is now the benchmark by which all other days are measured. Every day since has been infinitely better. Story 11 this is not that good. I spent most Saturdays with my grandma and we would watch the same VHS of Moonstruck every week. I never told her how much I hated that movie. It's a good movie, but not when you're eight. We would watch it and then after we would eat ice cream and put on SNL. Opera Man era. I would give anything to watch Moonstruck again with my grandma. Edit. Thank you for sharing all these great memories. It's hard to look back and really get a sense of what was lost that long ago and to know that we are all reeling in the years. Hopefully some of us can be our grandparents to a new generation. Although Cher will never act again and SNL will never have this again. I loved my grandma so much and 15 years later I just wish I could see her again. That I wish she could be the great grandma now and just hand me a tissue so my eyes weren't watering. She always had a tissue in her pocket or sleeve. Grandma Baller Move Story 12 I was in high school. I had problems talking to people. I was a shy kid. I found out my cousin went to the same school, and I saw that he was on the same boat. He was a lot more social and a lot more funny, but he just didn't click with people, just me. We became best friends, had a blast at lunch every day. One day a girl invited me to go eat sushi, and I was stoked. I had plans with my cousin, tradition you may say, and just bailed on him. I was like, yo, this really cute girl asked me to eat sushi with her, and although he was upset, he was like, cool, have fun. Well, when it was time to go eat, I went with the girl and some people told her they were gonna go eat at X place, but they only had room for one more in their car. The girl without hesitating said yes, and just got in and left me. I was scared to walk through the hallways, scared to run into my cousin. I didn't have the gut to tell him what just happened. I passed by the library and saw him there, sitting alone, passing time. Broke my heart and I left him. Never again. Brothers before everything. Story 13. Probably 15 years ago my sister had a gerbil and one day I decided to bring it out of her cage and surprise her in the living room with it. Somehow I slipped on carpet and the gerbil went flying headfirst into the wall. It basically sounded like I threw a golf ball at the wall and the gerbil isn't moving. Naturally, I put it back in its cage and removed myself from the vicinity. To my amazement, the thing was still alive and moving around a few minutes later and lived another two years without anyone ever knowing that I basically Kobe's it into the wall at full speed. Story 14 
My dad was single and a couple of my friend's moms were always bringing us food. My dad would say they were just being nice because he was a single guy raising three kids by himself. My aunt picked me up from school sick and we headed home. She must have known what was up and had me wait in the car. Both of my friend's moms came out half dressed in crap with my aunt yelling at my dad. I never did tell out of fear. One mom was divorced, but one wasn't and I was afraid of tearing their family apart. We'll take it to my grave. Story 15 During my freshman year in high school, I was drinking a red Gatorade at lunch. This girl said that I was sitting in her seat. I hurried and swiped my drink to find another seat. I didn't realize my Gatorade lid wasn't tightened and the drink basically splashed all over her white pants. I scurried off pretending I basically just didn't screw up this girl's pants with red Gatorade. A few weeks later my friend invited me over to play some league at his house. His sister came home and I realized that was the girl I spilled my drink on. On God I was dumb thing my pants at that very moment. But luckily she seemed to have not remembered my face because she did not mention it. My friend and I still talk to this day. I graduated high school nine years ago, and I have never told this to him or his sister. I sometimes feel like she pretends to not remember and is actually plotting something all these years. What's a secret you're taking to the grave, but willing to share? Story 1 I have shared it before, but I have a mom of a friend who took me in when I was homeless just after high school. She made me a lemon meringue pie that first night, and I was so hungry I nearly ate the whole thing by myself. I hadn't had a home-cooked meal for a long time. She was so excited that I loved it because her boys turned their nose up at it. The catch is, I can't stand lemons or meringue. Now, she's been making me a lemon meringue pie every year since because it's my favorite. Over 20 years and counting of lemon meringue pies that I will happily choke down until the day she dies, then I will miss those pies more than anything else in the world. Story 2 My wife and I were in our early days of dating when she bought baseball tickets for us and some friends. The problem though was the tickets ended up being for that afternoon and not the following day. She was super upset and was afraid she lost that money. I had her put them on the resale site. They didn't sell for a few hours so I went and bought them. I'd do it 100x overseeing her face of relief. I realized them for a lower price and made a little of the money back. I think she would literally eliminate me if she found out. TLDR bought the same baseball tickets twice to make my now wife happy. Story 3 My sweet and gentle wife called me upset because she was unsure if she hit a squirrel with her car on her way to work. She said it ran out in front of her, but she didn't see him lying in the road afterward. The road she was on is close to our house, so I went and found the poor little guy, scooped him up with a shovel and buried him on the side of the road so that on her way home she would see that there wasn't a dead squirrel and assume she hadn't hit him. That's exactly what happened. She was relieved and I'll never tell her the truth. Story 4 My younger brother and his wife were struggling financially after having a kid. They were both in school full time and both worked to try and make ends meet, but one particular month things were looking really rough because he got injured and couldn't work. I was working overtime at a really well-paying job at the time. So one night, after getting paid, I went to their place and put an envelope with my entire pay into their mail slot in the door. It was accompanied with a letter I typed, pretending to be an old lady in the apartment building who had seen them with their newborn and wanted to help the new parents out. The relief they got from it was repayment enough for me. I don't want him to ever find out it was me. And now that he's graduated, he's the one working at an insanely well-paying job, and I'm currently disabled, unable to work. Funny how life works out that way. Story 5 I was 13 when I did this. My big brother is a die-hard Ronaldo fan. Around the time of his birthday, I happened to be in Dallas, and Ronaldo also happened to have a game in the city. I quickly asked my uncle to take me to the local sports store so I can use my savings to buy a Ronaldo jersey and waited for hours outside Ronaldo's hotel for him to sign it, but he never came out, and my flight back home was soon. So, on my flight back home I ended up signing the jersey myself after studying Ronaldo's signature. 
I also found a couple believable photos on Google of Ronaldo walking and made it seem like I took those pics myself right before he signed it. When my big brother opened the present, he fell to his knees in shock and happiness and 15 years later, he still cherishes it and talks about it weekly how it's the best gift of his life. Can't take that joy away from him. To the grave. Story 6. Our podiatrist, who was also in the same alpine club as my husband, died last year in a motorcycle accident. He was married and they had two kids. He also had about 20 girlfriends, 250k in a safe deposit box, a load of brand new sports gear in the cellar, and 68 guns. His wife slash widow found out after his death. It made it so much easier for her to move on. We helped with getting rid of all this stuff, and now she's happy and dating someone. All that time they were married, she was so stressed and sometimes scared for her life so she couldn't divorce him. She had a feeling he was cheating but didn't know up to what extent. Also, he seemed to be earning a lot more money than he was declaring in their taxes. She still has no clue where that 250k came from. Story 7 I know where the 7 iron really was that day. Doug didn't leave it on hole 6. I used it to hit a ball back into the driving range and the club slipped out of my hand and landed in a tree. I also used to look at that tree for a good year or so each time we played, praying that you wouldn't see the sun reflecting off it as you'd know it was me. My friend's mom's golf set. Story 8. I have a pretty mild one I'm willing to share. I have a friend who's been single for a very long time. Whenever we talk about girls, he pretty much always talks about one girlfriend he had during high school. He keeps talking about that relationship and expanding on the lore and the intricacies of how they had so much passion but life pulled them apart. What he doesn't know is that I know for a fact that the girl he's referring to did not have a relationship with him. I know at least three different people who hooked up with her during the timeline of his alleged relationship and that she later had a relationship with another guy for some years before she moved away. It's not a case of my friend having been cheated on or lied to. He was basically her orbiter at the time and got two to three pity hookups, but he's twisting reality to make their friendship appear as a relationship. I don't have the heart to tell him that I know he's lying, so I just nod in agreement. Story 9. I had a terrible mother and father promised myself to never walk out on my kid. When my first kid was two years old, my wife cheated and it crushed me. She was the major breadwinner at the time and I had to move out of our upper middle class house into an apartment in the crap part of town. I nearly committed suicide. She realized her mistake and came begging for me to take her back after about nine months. I love my kids so much and wanted to spend every day with them, so I forgave her and we have been together since. She doesn't know for the last 16 years, I haven't loved her. I pretend to be happy to ensure someone else doesn't raise my children. Story 10. I have hoped that I'll be able to safely share and talk about this someday, but I'm still far from that day. For now, it's a lifelong secret. I was essayed by my father at four to five years old. My father hasn't been in my life for nearly five years. He's pretty messed up. However, I still love and miss him deeply, genuinely. I made the decision to cut him out and haven't looked back. It's been a hard journey forward. No one in my life understands why, because I would be humiliated if I talked and my family won't believe my truth. Story 11 This one's pretty dark just FYI. I was deployed to Iraq. We had a hot-headed guy who would be a gunner on the Humvees and shoot a ton of warning shots when vehicles got close. Like 10x the amount everyone else in our platoon combined. Anyway, I got out on a detail away from my platoon for a couple months. When I got back, it was the same old thing. A few years after we got back, I was talking to a friend of mine who was in my platoon over there. Turns out this guy who was the hothead straight up blew a dude's head off in a car in front of him and shot a dude in a bus when he was the passenger. I'm talking they weren't even near our platoon. He straight up eliminated them. Want the kicker? He's now a cop in North Carolina. Story 12. Not technically a secret, because I've only told my wife who also knows the person in question. Many years ago during a trip to Amsterdam my drunk and stoned friend and I stumbled into a sex shop. 
My friend went up to the counter and brazenly asked, where's the kitty porn? He was ushered behind a screen into another room and shown a room full of shells of porn. I took a mag off the shelf and turned the page. I then literally grabbed him by the collar and dragged him out of the door. I didn't mention it ever for about 20 years. Now I don't know if he meant what he said, but he certainly said it. Married four kids pillar of society now, but part of me still thinks if deep down he's a sicko. Story 13 In my early 20s I met an older woman at a bar and went back to her place for a hot night. I gave her a strip tease and she loved it. So much so that she reached out several days later and asked if I wanted to strip at her friend's 50th birthday party. Reluctantly, I agreed as the money she offered was a good amount. So I stripped and spent the whole party in basically nothing. I had a blast and so did they. I thought it'd be a one-time thing but I continued to get phone calls from women for months after. Some women at these events I recognized from my mom's church or social groups. And I've seen them since. This went on for about two years and I made great money. Don't think I'll ever tell my family but I'm willing to share. Story 14 Last fall, my boyfriend and I were driving down a windy mountain road en route to a camping site he was focusing on the turns because we had had a couple of close calls with other cars rip-roaring around bends and nearly hitting us head-on. At one point, I saw a box turtle in the road, but I just saw it too late and didn't have time to warn him. We have always been the type of people to get out of the car and move turtles out of danger slash off the roads when we go camping in the backcountry in fall slash spring and I knew he would be upset to know he had unintentionally squished one, so I've kept it a secret, and I doubt I'll ever tell him about it. R.I.P. Mr. Turtle Story 15 I've been thinking of giving up on my dream in life I want to write and illustrate stories. I came up with at least seven long-running ideas in my head, and they all have ten main characters with story arcs, character arcs, villains, whole universes that I have spent the past like 20 years of my life playing over and over in my head. Stories where a demon rips a dragon's brain out, stories where gods collide, how a universe is created, a story where a superhero is sent into a video game world. But the more and more I go on and live life the more I realize I don't have the time. How am I going to work, cook, clean and pay bills and then see I only have two hours left before I need to sleep for work the next day? and a decent looking page takes five hours to draw. All those dreams I had of making these cool stories will probably fade away. My characters will probably never see the light of day and it makes me sad because it could be so awesome. What's your secret that you won't tell anyone outside Reddit? Story one. A few years ago, my dad's truck was broken into and he lost all of his rings. He had several silver rings, would take them off to drive because the wheel rubbing on the rings was irritating. Forgot them in the truck one day and they were all stolen. My dad is not the type to accept gifts, especially if it's a replacement for something that was lost due to his own error. Over the years, I've been slowly replacing them. I'll save up, buy a ring that looks similar to one of the old ones, and then I'll either claim I found it somewhere or leave it for him to find. I replaced two by pretending I found them in the snow while out shoveling. Months later, I left one outside our front door for him to find. It makes him so happy every time one is found. I hope he never finds out I am the one leaving them lol. Story 2 My best friend growing up meant the world to me. We were friends for 7 years when she became friends with a neighbor girl. In 6 months, the neighbor girl was considered part of their family and still is to this day. There are pictures of a neighbor girl at her wedding with my best friend's entire family there as part of the wedding party. I am from a very broken family and a lot of abuse. I considered them my family. Her sister, her brother, her mom and dad. Last month the sister messaged me on Instagram like I was a strange long lost connection from elementary school. The most afterthought you could imagine. Story 3 Just about every day. When I am in the car headed to work, I genuinely contemplate just driving off and leaving everything behind. My fantasy is heading all the way to Alaska, living in a motel room, and washing dishes for work. I can't go through with it because I have people counting on me. Yes, I am in therapy. Edit, 
I got a message from a bot that a concerned Redditor was reaching out. I don't know who you are, but I appreciate you. I can assure you that I do not wish to harm myself. Just experiencing the call of the void. Thank you, though. You are a good person. Story 4 Never ever will I tell my sister how insanely jealous I am that she had the wedding I never did. This is not because she got the big party and all that hoopla, or because she had a beautiful dress. It's because dad got to walk her down the aisle, she got her daughter daddy dance. There was none of that for me. My father was diagnosed in the fall of 2014 with cancer, and I was engaged that Christmas. We were Wednesday, Monday, April 13th, 2015, and that Friday dad was gone. I made the last thing he'd ever eat. French toast. My first meal cooked as a married woman was his last as my father. Gone were the dreams of the summer solstice wedding in my mother's beautiful garden. One of the hardest points was that particular year, the summer solstice was also Father's Day. She'll never know. Screw you cancer. Story 5. I read a lot. I wake up as early as 4 to 4.30 a.m. so I can read or even stay up super late. Not just because I like it a lot, but because it keeps me from thinking intrusive thoughts ever since my mother died five years ago from cancer. The feeling of going into another world if only for a moment makes me feel secure. Not sure if that's healthy, but it's better than any antidepressant I was given that made me feel like a different person. Story 6 I once sat in a sauna at the gym contemplating what to do in life. Just in one of those moments in life where the road ahead was unclear. A man walked in who was 30 plus years older than me and sat down. Just the two of us were there. I felt this strong urge to ask him his advice, what his regrets in life were, if he were in his 20s again, what would he do differently, etc. But my social anxiety and general fear of men kept me quiet. I've always regretted it. I think sometimes life puts opportunities in our path to learn and grow and missing any of them due to something like social anxiety is such a waste. Story 7 About seven years ago, I woke up to an explosive diarrhea fart in bed. It was when my spouse and I had just started seeing each other. I woke up in such a panic. I was able to slowly get up and clean the whole mess up while my spouse stayed asleep. I stained the sheets all the way down through the mattress topper to the actual mattress. I scrubbed the evidence as best I could and tossed my shorts and underwear. I laid a towel down to go back to sleep and when we woke up I told them I had started my period. To this day that's still what they believe. Story 8 I have the desire to just pack my bags and leave. Start over somewhere where nobody knows me and expects something from me and creating a life for myself. I feel guilty, though, because I feel like I won't miss my family or my friends. That's a secret eating me up. Edit, I'm 18 and nothing is holding me back from doing so, just the fear. Just so you guys know it's not like I'm leaving my kids and husband behind etc. It's just the fear of the unknown and knowing that if I do this my parents will not expect anything of me anymore and I'm afraid of that. Story 9 My mother died in childbirth. I was a child. There was a photo my dad kept on the mantle. He's got my sister hoisted up on his shoulders. He's looking out of breath and nervous. He set the timer on the camera and wasn't sure of the settings. My mother stood next to him. His arm around her and she's looking up at them and laughing. She looks young, happy, and very pregnant. When I was about seven, I destroyed it. He turned the house upside down looking for it. Eventually, he thought it was stolen for the silver frame, toured the pawn shops, and banned me and my sister from having visitors. Story 10 I have told a few people, but it's limited. I am a CSA victim and my abuser made national news twice for the video she took of us boys, not the physical abuse. Police didn't investigate properly, and when I went to make a report 30 years after the abuse the cop at reception was a hostile, rude, and aggressive man. I walked out actually crying. The cop quit his job two weeks into his investigation. But that cop literally broke my soul. I don't feel strong enough to open up about my abuse and how hard it's been being let down by police at every step. Story 11 
My fiancé loves to sing around the house, but only when I'm not there or can't hear. She has the most beautiful voice and incredible vocal ability. My secret? When I have my headphones on around the house, she'll sometimes call out to me and I'll pretend I can't hear her at all. She'll often start singing and I turn my headphones off so I can hear her properly. It's been four years and she still doesn't know that I purposely ignore her so I can listen to her singing. Story 12 I don't like the name we picked for our daughter. It's a classic name that works well where we live and with her brother's name. I don't hate it by all means, but I would have wanted a different name. I couldn't bring myself to tell my partner because it is his favorite name of all time and he agreed to my favorite name for our son. I am about to pop and at times I think I have not delivered already because I am not ready to accept her name. Edit, I probably should delete the comment as it's not a secret anymore. I sat down with my partner and told him that I don't really like the name we choose for our daughter. We had a long talk about it. He had similar feelings with our son and didn't say anything as he knew it was my favorite name. But he also said the name really grew on him, so no regrets there. Story 13. I have written a script that automatically generates new Google voice numbers, emails, and various social media profiles to harass all the people that bullied me in high school and those who sexually assaulted me 20 years ago. If they block the number, a new number is generated and calls them every 5 to 60 minutes randomly. Email-wise, they get flooded by infinitely generated emails regarding bullying and sexual assault that they have to manually block. Jehovah's Witnesses, Mormons, Scientologists, and a bunch of other people knock on their door all the time since they are signed onto their lists. Once a year, I'll update the information in the script if they move or change their number, but this will continue to happen to them until they die. I had an idea to contact their spouses and kids and show them all of this, but decided against it because they were not at fault for any of this. Story 14 I'm in love with my best friend. I told her two years ago that I wanted to take her on an actual date, and she told me she just wanted to be friends. After that it was a couple weeks of her not really talking to me, and then unfortunately she had an accident. The accident resulted in problems partially impacting both long and short term memory. I didn't ask if she remembered our conversation. And we more or less went back to the way things were, other than her telling me the same adorable stories over and over again, multiple times a week. Story 15 Back when we were dating, my wife found out I'd never had a surprised birthday party before. She really wanted to throw one for me, which I was okay with. Only one problem, it never worked. She'd try almost every year, throwing surprise parties for other occasions. Each time, as she was planning stuff, I'd pick up on some discrepancy in her cover story, or pick up on something that a friend said, ask about it, and she'd be unable to cover it. Then finally, after years and years of this, she pulled it off. She was delighted and so proud that she at last managed to surprise me. She's talked about it for years, about how close I came to uncovering it. It made her so happy, and it was a lot of fun. Except what actually happened is I finally managed to be quick enough putting the pieces together to stop myself before I asked about the discrepancy in her cover story. Played dumb, pretended I had no idea. I was surprised when the day came. She will never know. What's your dirty secret? Story 1 I have a pretty unhealthy relationship with food. Everyone thinks I'm so lucky that I can eat whatever I want and still be really slim. On the outside, I eat loads of pizzas and burgers and go out to restaurants all the time and generally manage to stay in good shape without ever dieting. The truth is there are some days slash weeks where behind closed doors I just don't eat to make up for the days where I overindulge. It kind of works for me, but objectively speaking I think I may have a bit of an eating disorder. Story 2 I've been on a low-carb diet all year and my guilty pleasure is the sugar-free low-carb ice cream. It tastes great, but if you overindulge it gives you horrible gas that always seems to come out in public so I seek out the elderly to lay my dirty bombs. Most recently, I was in a grocery store and the flatulence came upon me with a vengeance. So I found a gaggle of old timers conversing in the middle of the aisle and proceeded to crop dust them and then listen to them blame it on each other while I walked away cackling maniacally. Story 3 
A few years back I went on holiday with my then girlfriend and her family. We went out one night for a birthday celebration and came home late after lots of drinks and a nice meal. There were five of us staying in a small, one-bedroom apartment with an extra fold-out couch and a roll-away bed. The morning after the celebration, I was the first awake. I needed to use the bathroom, but didn't want to stink out the small apartment. So I dressed and left to look for a public bathroom and to enjoy a morning walk. I did not know the area and soon got busy exploring. Once I got moving, the urge to use the bathroom faded and I relaxed, walking leisurely. Story 4 I have a friend who I know lies constantly online. I humor him to spare his feelings. He constantly claims he understands reality because he had a dream once. As if people haven't already dreamed about Space Jellyfish claims to have a 10 inch long 5 inch around Mr. P. It's 25% smaller than that. Says all the women and a few men flirt with him wherever he works. Can never keep a job longer than 3 weeks to 5 months and then claims I was about to lead a worker uprising and they're involved with the mob. Also claims to have been addicted to meth from 6th grade to 9th grade and went to rehab. Does copious amounts of weed and then claims it doesn't affect his emotions slash mind yet spirals through every emotion. Claims to have 3 million worth of Bitcoin yet struggles financially. If you ask why doesn't cash it out he'll get angry. Story 5. I default to the wife's choice for most things because she's not used to doing what someone else wants to do and just enjoying time with them and becomes a drag about 15 minutes into the thing someone else wants to do. But now she's so tired of picking the places to go that she just asks me where I want to go, but if it's not the spot that she feels like going to she will drag her feet again. I go to places I want to go by myself and I just don't tell her. It's not really a secret though. We've talked about it and she promises to work on being better about it, but I just can't get into something I'm not into so I just save her the hassle and go on my own. Movies, dinners, places, and people. I just don't bother her with it. Story 6 When no one believes your dirty secrets, they become quite easy to share. I've been a collared house pet for the past 23 years. I've been interacting with the real world again for over a year at this point. I have my own money, but I still feel like I'm 15 to 20 years old in a 40-ish body. The real world is terrifying and confusing AF, but people in general are far, far kinder than I expected or remembered. TLDR, I'm in danger. Story 7 I moved around a lot as a kid. Almost every year I was in a different school. I was always the new kid trying to fit in and morph myself into something my new potential friends would like. The only exception was high school as I stayed there all four years, but by that time this habit was well formed. To this day I don't really know what I really like or dislike. I don't have a personality of my own. I'm just sort of a friend chameleon. I'm the funny friend who helps in meeting people, but beyond that I'm not very emotionally deep and can lose people out of my life at the drop of a hat and not really care. There is no real me. Story 8 I find my girlfriend incredibly sexy and cannot wait to marry her. We're both saving ourselves for marriage, but she is short, curvy, and very sweet with a little wild side, super smart and hardworking, and I love her. I just want to protect and care for her for the rest of her life and cannot wait to do the deed with her after marriage. Her mom hates me though cause I'm choosing a career in creative field and I cannot wait to finish school and marry her and have a great life with her and just make them jealous of her as her mom treats her badly so does her dad. Type of parents where because they fed you then everything else you should be grateful for no matter their bad behavior and or lack of. Boundaries Story 9 one time, in Bible camp, I had grabbed a pair of tiny witties, soaked it in the bathroom faucet, took the splash guard and the standing urinal out, placed the garment underneath, put the guard back, all while my age group was out for pool time. I had thought it would be funny to repeat the same prank that happened a few days earlier and sent hysterical surges through the summer camp. Instead, what happened was pool time ended immediately and we all did physical conditioning until someone admitted to the second occurrence. Obviously, I stayed quiet as nobody laughed this time as a second time was too much for the counselors. Still friends with some camp members. This was 10 years ago. They still don't know to this day. 
None of them. Honestly, my darkest secret to this day. Story 10. I had the opportunity to enter a poly relationship with a person I really like. I'm not really into the idea of a poly relationship, but honestly, I would have done it to be with them. The only problem is that they are married to someone that I really hate. Like, I really, really don't like this person. I don't even want to be close to them. They started as a mono, married, then opened the relationship to be poly. I know that maybe I wouldn't have to interact a lot with this person, but I really didn't want to deal with that. I feel awful that I miss out on something just because I don't like someone. They took it pretty hard and I feel like I ruined our friendship, but I feel I did the right thing for me. Still hurts that I ruined that friendship though. Story 11. I won 41k a few years ago. Immediately gave 25k to my parents to clear any debt. Left me with 16k. Shortly after I received my trust fund of roughly 4k. I was 18 years old with 20k in the bank. This should have set me up for a long time. All of my family think I have most of the money, but the truth is it's all gone. I went through a really rough patch with my mental health and threw it all away on drugs, alcohol, and impulse purchases to try and feel something. Anything. Short term, sure it gave me a little buzz. Fast forward to now, I've got nothing. It's all gone and I hate myself for it. I live paycheck to paycheck all whilst trying to pretend I'm financially stable. Part of me wants to just tell them and get it off my chest. The other part is scared of their reaction when I tell them I blew 20k on total crap. I get it was my money but I'm so disappointed in myself. More so for the 4k in my trust fund. It took years for my parents to build that up. Literal years. And now it's gone. Story 12. I've been in love with an extremely close friend of mine for years. Her and I both have these feelings for each other and have both made these known. And every time we see each other, we talk about it. We're both in extremely happy and extremely committed relationships, but still harbor feelings for each other. It would likely blow up the lives of everyone around us if anything were to come of it and we're both aware that it's best if it just stays between us both and nothing ever comes of it. We used to share the same bed and get drunk together and stay up all night and go on long drives and cuddle and hold hands and all that crap and the things we talked about could never be repeated. There were times we came within an inch of saying screw it and kissing each other and giving it all up but it never actually happened. To be honest, a part of me would still drop everything if she gave me the word. Story 13 I had intimacy with a straight friend who had a girlfriend at the time. So, context, my body is naturally very androgynous and I decided to dress up as Gerudo Link from the Breath of the Wild. Face Shaw and everything, even did my own touch and used eye makeup. The goal was to see how long it took people to recognize me at the party. Those who found out quickly convinced not to tell. Anyway, party goes on and one of my friends fails to notice so I keep teasing him throughout the party. He gets super drunk and as the party ends and people leave. I stay behind to help clean. It's his house so of course he stays and I tease him a bit more. Which was kind of a bad move with no one else around. One thing leads to another and we start having intimacy. He doesn't seem to remember anything the next day, and as a bro, I don't say anything to preserve his relationship. I've kept the secret since. Story 14 Watching my in-laws family drown in debt due to bad choices and screw us over in the past. Then expecting help whilst still trying to live the dollar life on a dime and me telling my partner we can't afford to help them because we are barely surviving. We are not barely surviving, we are thriving and we will have a comfortable future ahead of us. I just can't expose this yet until they have drowned enough that money won't help them. Oh, and I plan on spending 30,000 pounds on my dream car and take my partner on the dream holiday she's always wanted. At that exact moment they lose the house and they are at their lowest. This is my dirty secret plan to make them feel as crap as we did when they made us homeless years back, but this will be worse because it will become apparent I could have helped them all along but I chose not to. Story 15 when I was in high school, I was on the cheerleading squad, and one day we did a pep rally. The cheerleaders weren't the cool ones in the school, 
BC we weren't very good, so we'd been working hard to get better and get our reputation back. We did a human pyramid at the pep rally that took a lot of practice and would have been so cool if we pulled it off. The whole pyramid caved to the ground in front of the entire school and the team was devastated. I was at the bottom and panicked under pressure and my leg buckled, but I never told anyone. They still don't know it was my fault. What is an industry secret that you know? Story 1 The places you put your parents, even the more expensive ones. Independent and assisted living. Most are owned by investors who really don't care about your loved ones. Especially the larger corporate ones with multiple units in different states. Some people are paying thousands per month for the bare minimum of care and facilities. The crap I see and hear will make your skin crawl. Story 2. Nutrition labels on small, not well-known brands can be inaccurate and nobody would ever know. Once you send your food product out to a lab to have a nutrition label created for it, that is the last time anyone is ever going to check it. It would take someone to pay for a new analysis at a lab to see if the percentage of core gum, for example, is still accurate and nobody is going to do that. Nutrition labels are to be held as estimates at best. If you take proteins for an example, considering the true quality of the poultry industry, force-fed, caged chickens, the nutrition facts are estimates based on optimal poultry-based nutrition, which we simply are not getting anymore. This is held across an overwhelming amount of avenues. Story 3. ER Veterinarian When your pets are hospitalized or need to stay at the clinic, unless they're aggressive, need to be monitored very carefully, or we're absolutely slammed, they are constantly getting positive attention from the staff. I've had kennel attendants and techs cuddle up with patients on their breaks. Myself and colleagues have made phone calls or typed up records while holding on to your pets. We routinely talk about how cute the patients are. In fact, it's a running joke that we would get fired immediately if we worked in human medicine, etc. And we do get attached to your pets. We know that your pet got into your weed, and we truly don't care. Seriously. Just be honest. Story 4. If you're shopping online, start the checkout process and then before paying close your window. You will very likely get a coupon with a discount over the next few days in your email. Kind of related, but back around 2008 my cousin wanted to buy gold for World of Warcraft. He filled everything out and just left it at checkout on the website. 40 minutes later we get a phone call from an angry Chinese woman asking if he was going to buy it or not. That was a big nope for us after that. I don't know who thinks that is a valid business strategy or even a good idea. It did scare him out of breaking the rules though so I guess that's good. Story 5 It's not a secret but Hollywood promotes many lies about my job. I'm a fire sprinkler tech. Hollywood always shows every head going off during a fire. Only the head that gets hot goes off. If it's a 10-story building and a fire is on the first floor, why would the heads on the 10th floor go off? Plus, there isn't enough water for that. Pool stations do not set off sprinklers. They are only tied to the alarm, not the piping. The only reason it bugs me is because it's life safety, and if someone hesitates to pull a pool station during a fire, people die. Story 6 in-store bakeries and supermarkets cost more to operate than doing it off-site in large factories and shipping the stuff in daily, but they operate them anyway because the smell of fresh bread increases sales, not just of bread, but across all product types. In reality, only a small proportion of the bread they sell is actually baked in the store bakery anyway. This is also why the fresh grocery fruit and vegetables are usually right by the door. Walking into that gives the impression that this is a store full of fresh and natural goods which subconsciously triggers positive emotions in our brains. Story 7. Marriott actually has six tiers on its rewards program. For most people, there are five, starting at silver and working your way up through the shiny metals to ambassador, which requires spending 100 nights and more than $23,000 on rooms in a year, and you have to maintain this to keep it. But what their website doesn't tell you is that there is a tier called Cobalt, which can only be given out by the CEO. Naturally, this tier can transform even a lowly Fairfield into a full-service property. I've never seen one, 
but the only reason I know was because I was given the GM's training manual while learning how to do night audits. Story 8 I know someone who had a similar level from a luxury hotel chain. They traveled for business a lot, it was their company, and stayed exclusively at those hotels. They also stayed at them for any travel and would take a few vacations a year. They're also part of the company's timeshare vacation club at a good level. As their level went up, they would stay at the better properties in the big cities. Their membership level hit the top tier pretty quickly and stayed there for years. One day, the company reached out, hey, here's a new level we created for members like you. You're basically top tier for life now, even if you stopped staying with us tomorrow. They of course continue to stay at their properties exclusively, as long as there's one where they're going, get amazing prices, the best room available, whatever bonus amenities are provided, and zero hassle. Story 9 Right now, mass transit agencies in most cities in the United States are dealing with massive shortages of drivers, mechanics, and many other administrative positions. The drivers are working 70 plus hours every week just to keep the system going. Drivers need a CDLB with P endorsement, therefore there is nothing illegal about working a driver 17 hours a day. Therefore, transit agencies are forcing drivers, per union contract in most cases, using inverse seniority, to work constantly. It's a huge safety risk, but no one seems to care about that. Story 10 Water coming from wastewater treatment plants is cleaner than the river water it's going into. The main problem is not enough dissolved oxygen. That's seriously the biggest danger. Meanwhile, the worst pollution for most rivers is runoff causing high biochemical oxygen demand, BOD. AKA too much food for bacteria that also consume O2. So just like the danger from the wastewater treatment plant, fish suffocate. All the random stuff from metal finishers is stopped before it's allowed into the sewer system. If the system is working correctly, Story 11 One of my best days ever was when I took my kid to Dave and Buster's. They do the digital tickets there. You play the game, then insert your card to collect the points. Anyway, the place was pretty dead when we were there. I noticed one game that said there were points to collect, so I swiped the card and didn't pay much attention to how many points I collected. I didn't even have a very good idea of what a large amount of points were. So we finish up playing and go to get some prizes. To my surprise, we have like hundreds of thousands of points. So much that the person at the prize counter has to call their manager over. He asks me questions about the card, etc. looking at me suspiciously. I tell him about the game that I collected the points from. We go over to look at it and it is incrementing points up automatically and quickly. Basically, it was broken and loading on points. It's your lucky day. He said. We got all sorts of stuff, glasses, toys, electronics. It was probably like $350 worth of stuff. Like actually $350, not DNB $350. Story 12. Teachers routinely fudge kids' grades upward. Sometimes it's because a kid is nice. Sometimes it's because administrators pressure us. Sometimes we're afraid of being sued. That high graduation rate at your local HS? It's most likely due to the books being cooked. ETA, I've said this before, but this whole situation is a prime example of Goodhart's law in action. When a metric becomes a target, it loses all meaning. The HS I teach it touts a low number of suspensions and no expulsions this year. And yet, it is almost guaranteed that a student will tell me to go screw myself when I ask for his phone tomorrow. ETA again, for all the people talking about kids getting held back, that doesn't happen anymore really. I've been teaching for 20 years and I can count on one hand the number if students I've seen get held back. It's exceptionally rare. Story 13. I worked for FedEx Trade Networks clearing customs shipments and almost anyone buying anything over 800 bucks or stuff from China and a few select other countries have to provide what's called a 5106. A 5106 is a form the US government uses for duties and tax purposes and crap, but on the form you need to provide a social security or EIN number. 
We started working remotely in 2021 and on my work computer from inside my house with nobody being able to ever know I had access to 100s of social security numbers, addresses, names and everything to easily steal identities. That's not even the kicker. This is an entry level position and anyone can work it and have access to this crap. If you import personally from overseas and need to provide a 5,106 you're better off getting an LLC to avoid the very high possibility that some nonsense FedEx hired doesn't snap a photo of your 5,106 form from his phone. Story 14 With the advancement in lab-grown diamonds in the past few years, even the most experienced gemologists can barely distinguish them from mined diamonds. Don't waste your money on real diamonds anymore. ETA, yes, most, if not all, lab-grown diamonds have an inscription, which is how a jeweler would know the difference, though these can be hard to find immediately, as they're very small. But I mean from a quality standpoint, it's very difficult to tell, and lab-grown tend to be better quality, clarity, color, cut. So, if a jeweler can't tell until it's in a loop, the average person definitely can't. The proper lab drone doesn't have the bright blue fire that moissanites do, which gives them away. Also, I worked at a jewelry store for years with a very experienced gemologist slash goldsmith, whom I'm still friends with and have had him tell me these things. I also took a lot of diamond and jewelry training while I was there. I'm not just pulling it out of my ass lol story 15. Your massage therapist doesn't care about your size or your body hair but they appreciate when you've showered within a few days of your appointment and have brushed your teeth. They aren't judging you for the things you feel self-conscious about, but they are judging you if you are an entitled crap. Saying things like my wife would not be happy if she knew how hot you were, although it may seem to you like a harmless compliment, is creepy and will get you on the do not schedule list. That one shouldn't be a secret, but apparently there are men who are oblivious to this. What is your most disturbing secret? Story 1. I have a good friend who is a very shy pooper. Like, we've been on trips together and he won't crap for days, he says he just can't relax and go because he's in public. But one time in college, about 6 years ago, he was super drunk and fell asleep crap on my toilet. And the crap got all over my toilet, not sure how but most of it did not go in the bowl. I got him up, cleaned him in the toilet up, and put him to bed. He was blackout drunk and doesn't remember it at all. I don't have the heart to tell him. He'd be mortified. It wouldn't do anyone any good. But when he's shy about pooping around me, I can't help but chuckle at the irony. Story 2. My family thinks I finished the computer science degree, but I dropped out. However, I've been working in the sector for about 25 years in a row without any trouble and people, employers and colleagues, seem to think that I'm quite competent. It's not disturbing per se, but for my parents it was a big deal that I finished my studies. My dad passed away three years ago without knowing. My mom is 83 and she is still proud of me and I hope things stay the same till she dies. Story 3 I'm a middle school teacher. A few years ago the classes were transitioning, so kids were coming into the room as kids were trying to get out of the room. I let out a really really bad egg fart straight sulfur the classroom instantly broke out in chaos kids blaming other kids kids jumping on the counter to try and get a window open kids running out of the room the poor other teacher was trying to get everyone to settle down but the damage was done it was the funniest thing i've ever seen not even a little sorry about it lol edit i am a woman story for my husband passed away a few years ago I tell everyone how much I loved him and only talk about the good times we had and how great he was. In honesty, I hated him for every bit of the 33 years we were together. He was so mean to me, both physically and mentally every single day. He hid it well and in front of anyone he was okay to me, but when we were alone he was terrible. I hated him so much I live alone now and am just finding myself. I moved to a different state and have made new friends and everyone seems to really like me and I even like myself now too. It's been really hard to tell myself that I am okay. I have never said any of this out loud. I feel bad that I am happy he is gone. Story 5 
I was abused mentally, physically, and sexually from the age of around 7 to 15 years old by one person, who I thought was my best friend during the time. I'm 23 now and just finally coming around to the realization of everything that happened and why I have so many mental health and trust issues now, and I'm talking about it in therapy finally. As far as I know, my abuser is living a comfortable, happy life and the only person that knows about this is me and my therapist. Story 6 Not a secret necessarily, but my labia tore in two spots near my clit when I gave birth to my son. I had him at home and my son's dad is and was verbally, mentally, and emotionally abusive. I had no support or help, so the stitches didn't hold. I was 22 at the time and obviously self-conscious of my vagina already, as most women are, and my ex tormented me by telling me things like my pussy was mangled and ugly. I was in survival mode for so long. It wrecked my self-esteem edited to add, holy banana pancakes, you guys. I have tried many times to write this crap out, and I always end up deleting it. But today, for some reason, it just stuck to sharing, and the outpouring of love and support and kindness has been overwhelming, unexpected, and beyond appreciated. Oh, and he is definitely an EX. Story 7 When my schizophrenia was first developing, it was a very hard time. I used to take off and take bike rides to try and clear the fog and whispers in my head, which rarely worked. While I rode, I listened to music. Eventually, it got so bad that I found myself playing roulette with the songs and walking the little wall over the canal. I decided that if one of the songs I had chosen came on when I hit shuffle, I would jump and unalive myself. They never did, and eventually, I got help, and things have been going a bit better with the right medication. Sometimes, on really hard days, I still bring up that same playlist and just hit shuffle and cry. Story 8 I secretly wish my parents would get divorced. They don't have a horrible relationship per se, but I just think my mom would thrive better without him. They've been married for almost 30 years and subscribed way too much to the you gotta stick it out school of thought so it's never gonna happen. I don't hate my dad. I just don't think he contributes much as a husband and as I grow older I think it more and more and feel bad she's stuck with an expert of textbook weaponized incompetence and admittedly low level but still constant gaslighting. Story 9 When I was a lot younger, currently 22, more immature and a complete naive asshole. I made fun of someone on social media because they got cancer. At least I've got a shot at redemption because I am currently in my final year of medical school and I am as of right now doing a large-scale research work on new cancer treatment options for some of the most malignant and fatal cancers right now working in the shadows plan on bringing it out into the academic and pharmaceutical realm when i am done with residency in histopathology and am fully organized to tackle the problems that comes after funny how life can work sometimes story 10 it's not my secret, but I know of a person from college who allegedly had an incestuous relationship with their mom that started when they were teenagers. I say allegedly because they only told me this while they were inebriated. When I would ask about what they told me after they sobered up, they would act like nothing happened. But whenever they opened up to me after drinking or smoking, I told them to seek therapy and help because that is statutory rape and incest. They never got the help. We stopped talking after college. To my knowledge, they are still living with their mom. Story 11. When I was a little kid, either five or six years old, I had gotten in trouble for throwing a TV remote at my sister. My dad is a very large and intimidating man. He stood in the doorway of my room yelling at me. I was hysterical. He was getting angrier and angrier. He started yelling at me to take my clothes off. I took my shirt off. He told me to take my pants off too. And my underwear. I'm in the corner of my room crying, hysterical, afraid, and naked, staring up at this giant, angry, red-faced man. I stood there like that for a moment, when suddenly his anger instantly left his face, making way for shame. He dropped to one knee in the doorway and put his head in his hands and cried to himself, saying, What am I doing? I'm a bad father. I walked over to him, still naked and crying, and said, you're not a bad dad. I hugged him. He left. 
I don't know if he thinks I forgot about that day, or what, but I remember it vividly. This was over 30 years ago, star dot asterisk, we've never talked about it. Story 12. A newly discovered younger relative is trying to connect with my family after researching his background through an ancestry site. He tried to find us when his mom always avoided the topic of his biological dad. No one knew about this except recently from my parents, two of my older sisters, and me. Apparently, this was his second attempt to connect with my family, but was having a hard time thinking it's because of him coming out to them as gay. We tried to help him find his father and asked around about him to other family members. Found out this relative was known about from other close relatives, aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc., but was never mentioned because he was the result of rape by one of my uncles. They swept it under the rug to cover my uncle, never told the kid who his father was and what he did, and distanced themselves from him. We, on the other hand, do connect with him every once in a while and hang out with him. I don't know if anyone told him that we know who and where his father is, but we have confirmed that we probably have seen him a few times at family gatherings, but that's about it. Story 13 For a full middle school school year, I was groped by a former friend and classmate. He grabbed my waist during swim practice, I was wearing a tight one piece, he was in swim trunks, and pulled me up against him. When I told him to stop he said stop what? I'm not touching you. I couldn't yell because the instructor was talking, I cried as I was swimming my next laps. That wasn't the first time he touched me but it's the first one I remember. I threatened to report him to school admins if he kept it up, but I never reported him. It got to the point where I'd have to run to the school band room to hide from him and he'd still try and chase me in. The next year, I found out he did the same to at least three other girls. I still see him around and he still tries to get close to me. I tried to kill myself when things with him got bad and I lived in constant fear of him at school. I never told my mom I didn't want her to see me any differently. To this day, only around four friends IRL know about this. Story 14 I had at the time my longest relationship of almost two years and ended when I was almost 20 years old. My ex was, in hindsight, was beyond mentally ill and quite abusive and yet I never spoke to anyone about it because this was still new internet slash cell phone times and thus no texts or emails of said constant abuse exists. And sadly no one tends to believe men who say women hit them and stalk them. 20 plus years later, not much has changed. Only comfort I have is my mother a few years back after a few glasses of wine made a comment about how she knew in her soul I was sad and tormented. Story 15 I shat myself at a wedding. I was 14 and I enjoyed occasionally eating this laxative called lance oil. It's for kids. It tastes like raspberry jelly and we were a household with no good snacks. Just ingredients and fruits and veggies. I would sometimes sneak one to two teaspoons of this jelly when I was feeling something sweet. No big deal. Well, one Saturday I was hungry and did my usual jelly treat. But I don't know why, I just didn't stop eating it that day. It was a Costco sized jar. You need one one to two teaspoons to help pass your bowels. I ate half the jar. We had a wedding that afternoon. A bit gross, sorry, but when I tell you I wasn't even pushing. It was just coming out. We had to go home and I didn't stop crap for a whole day. Mom threw out the lance oil and never bought it again. People who rarely get sick, what are your secrets? Story 1 I had always heard that multivitamins were a waste of money, but a few years ago I decided to start taking one anyway. I was also a little bit low in my blood work in vitamin D, so I started taking a low-dose daily vitamin D supplement. It could be entirely coincidental, but ever since I started doing that I get about 80% fewer illnesses. I used to get about 5 major colds per year, now it is surprising if I even get one. Also, I get an annual influenza vaccine and I've only caught influenza and tested positive for it once in about 25 years of being vaccinated. Story 2 Teacher here, I used to spend all of my sick and personal days on being sick each year. It was exhausting, didn't matter how much I washed my hands, what grade level I taught, etc. 
Started wearing a mask during COVID mandates and it was the first year in my career I didn't get sick. I wear a mask in my classroom every day now and it's been four years since I've gotten sick from students. My quality of life has gone up substantially now that I don't have to spend weeks with a lingering cold every school year. Story 3 I grew up in a family that strongly values health, so I've been doing all the eating right, hydrating, exercising, sleeping, etc. that everyone in the comments here is talking about for my entire life. I only stopped getting sick when masking started. Same pattern holds for the rest of my very large extended family, across different ages, genders, locations, jobs, family structures, etc. When mask requirements were removed, some of my family members stopped masking and others didn't. Those who stopped masking started getting sick again. Those who kept masking didn't. Again, the pattern holds across different ages, genders, locations, jobs, family structures, etc. Story 4 I'm a physician constantly exposed to sick people and my husband is a kinder teacher always bringing home colds. I never get sick. I pretty much only drink water. I like coffee but none of the sweet stuff. Americanos with a splash of cream. I don't drink or smoke. Frequent hand washing because of my job. I go to the gym at 5 a.m. three times a week. Another poster said Mexican genetics lol I'm also Mexican. Maternal grandpa died at 98 in his sleep. Smoking like a chimney all the way to the end. Parents don't have any medical issues. Mom is 75 on zero meds. Story 5. I used to get sick all the time. At least 3 to 4 illnesses each year. More when I traveled by plane or train. And then I began masking with N95s in indoor spaces. During the early days of COVID I realized I wasn't catching everything like I used to. Heck, I always get sick after traveling. Now I don't. It's fantastic. I also stopped eating indoors at restaurants. After lockdown, I realized I get overwhelmed in restaurants and don't enjoy my time in them. Lights, smells, noises, all the people. It's exhausting. I totally do outdoor dining. It's not as draining as indoor. I know there are a crazy number of opinions on masks. I'm not going to argue with anyone about them. What I do know, they work for me, and have made my quality of life infinitely better. Story 6 I wish I learned this before COVID, but wear a mask in public. I used to get colds twice a year like clockwork. One in the spring, another in winter. Colds with a nagging cough that wouldn't go away for weeks after. COVID happens, I mask up, get no colds for two years. I've learned you're all a bunch of germy bastards and continue to mask and gladly accept the scorn from 80 year olds who will be dead shortly anyhow. Story 7 I'm considered obese. I don't get enough sleep. I don't eat particularly healthy. However, I hardly ever get sick. As a kid, I got one cold a year between April slash May. I got the stomach flu once. As an adult, I don't even get a cold yearly. I only had COVID twice in four years and my symptoms were incredibly mild. I have no secrets except wash your hands and avoid too much sanitizer. Story 8 Not me, but my husband and hopefully my son, it's genetic. He literally has a rare gene mutation that makes him practically immune to the majority of common illnesses. Even when he gets sick or injured, he heals at a freakishly fast rate. He did this genetic test that is part of a university study where they give you a huge breakdown of a ton of info from illnesses you may be prone to, to likely personality traits. It was at Michigan and who knows, they could still be doing it. It was free. You have to complete this big questionnaire and track your habits for a bit, then send in some spit. They add it to their study and send back some huge report. It was quite interesting, and a bunch of the personality stuff was so spot on it was hilarious. Story 9 I have a chronic illness, so I really need to avoid being regular sick. I still mask in some situations, like healthcare facilities, or just when I get a vibe, and generally through the winter. I get really overheated in the summer or I would mask more. 
I masked when traveling. The mask goes on when I get out of the car at the airport and comes off when I get to the hotel. I am obsessive about washing or sanitizing my hands no matter what. I always have hand sanitizer, wipes, and soap in my bag. I have a big jug of sanitizer in my car and it's become habit to sanitize my hands every time I get back into my car. I also work from home and am a bit of a hermit. I do a lot of grocery delivery or curbside pickup to make things easier on me, but that probably helps. Story 10 The worst I ever got was shingles when I was 7. Since then it's been an odd cold every year. I have not had a single sick day since I started my job 11 years ago. ID put it down to pure luck or stubbornness at not wanting to ruin my street because I eat too much unhealthy food, work too much, don't exercise enough, don't get enough daylight. I don't have time in the day to get sick. Story 11 I try to get enough sleep. I always wear a mask when I'm in an airport slash on a plane. Don't know why this was never popular in the US before COVID because I can't imagine going back. I, LOL. Try not to breathe in very much when I'm in close proximity to people in stores, people just gross me out. Everyone's always coughing or sneezing without covering their mouths. I'm also vegan and I really think that helps. My sister was vegan for a few years and she says now that she eats dairy again she gets sick more often. I eat lots of fruit. I drink a warm lemon water every morning, before anything else, without fail, the only exception is on vacation and am going to start incorporating it then to BC, I do feel the difference when I go without. Warm lemon water and then I eat fruit before eating anything else. Not saying I've found the secret, but I rarely get sick, knock on wood, literally like once a year if that, and am always hearing about my friends being sick. Story 12 I haven't been sick since about 2020. I caught the first round of COVID, but it was pretty mild. I avoided getting the vaccine. It wasn't mandatory, and despite lots of peer pressure, I stuck it out. Anyway, I continued to work after lockdown in very busy, family-oriented places. Doing things like kids' parties, etc. I don't really do anything different to anyone else, I don't think. I'm married. I have kids in school. I work in busy places around people. I eat what I want and my lifestyle is generally unhealthy. If I had to give you one tip it would be this. Drink wine. Story 13. I have never done anything special, but I've rarely gotten sick ever. I've never had the flu, been told I'm a carrier by doctors, had COVID once, barely got or felt sick, maybe backed up sinuses, that's it. The one and only thing that I get by yearly it seems, is strep throat. Ever since I was a kid, that's the only thing other than a sinus infection I've ever had, and I've gotten it pretty regularly once every couple years. I also have a very active immune system, I.E. Doctors have told me I have a very high white blood cell count, but my liver function is normal and I don't have any ongoing infections. So I've always attributed that to why I don't get sick. My immune system just attacks crap like Zap Brannigan throwing wave after wave of its own men at pathogens. Story 14 Ever since I stopped drinking tea as my main source of water and switched to bottled water, I rarely get sick anymore. I also go for walks, bike rides, try hard virtual reality games, etc. When I stop doing those things, I tend to get depressed and gradually I start making bad choices more often. Oh, and I also managed to get my sleeping schedule to be consistent. Usually asleep by midnight and up around 8 to 9 a.m. If you're not getting good sleep for reasons you can help, you're shooting yourself in the foot. Story 15. I grew up in a less than clean home, so my immune system is jacked. Yo. Pair that with frequent exposure to every farm animal possible, as well as growing up in the school system and basically helping raise my siblings and nieces and nephews, I've got myself a robust immune system. Every five years or so, I get knocked on my rear by some random sickness, usually the flu. This year was the year unfortunately back in April I got knocked around by a nice case of the cold. Other than that, in every single other case, my symptoms are very, very mild runny nose and or mildly irritated throat and that's it what is your secret that you can't tell anyone because it will probably ruin your life story one i don't give my best at work because i don't care anymore 
I used to give them 100% and nobody noticed and only focused on the small mistakes I made. Now I give 40 to 50% and my manager keeps bugging my why my performance has dropped compared to before. I simply don't care. The salary is fine compared to the country standard, but in this field of work is on the lower end of the chart. I don't care. I'm overworked and underpaid by industry standard, not countrywide standard. Story 2. After fleeing domestic violence and trying to make a new life, I was diagnosed with stage 3 breast cancer. I'm fighting it, but I'm just so tired of life. My last baby turns 18 this week and I feel like I've done all I'm supposed to. I'm sick of being strong for everyone else when all I want to do is go. I'm just so tired. Edit. Wow, woke up this morning to this blowing up. I can thank everyone enough for the kind comments, messages, and overall support. I have somewhat a better outlook on things, at least for today anyway, suppose just one day at a time. I wish I could bless you all with awards and thanks, but for now upvotes will have to do. Thanks again, you don't know how much your kind words and thoughts mean to me. Story 3 I left my job at an electronics manufacturing company in 2002, but they continued paying me my full salary including all incremental raises and annual bonus until they offered me a very generous redundancy package in 2022 due to departmental restructuring, including an 85,000 pound lump sum contribution to my pension fund. I even got the quarterly magazine and annual Christmas card sent to me. In March of this year, 2023, I got an invite to the 75th anniversary of the company, went along, had a great time at the free bar, and nobody realized I hadn't worked there for over 20 years. You've got to love a good administrative error. Story 4 I have a bad back and from time to time it goes into a full spasm. One day I was getting out of bed and as my foot hit the floor I went into a full spasm. I have no idea how, but a perfectly formed turd fell out the leg of my shorts and landed on the floor. Due to my spasm, I fell and landed right in the poop. The commotion woke up my GF at the time, and she ran over to check on me. I blamed the dog. I've never actually told anyone this before. Story 5 One of my closest family members offered me intimacy during one of the most mentally unstable times of his life. I wasn't interested, nothing else happened, and the topic never came up again. One of the main reasons why I haven't brought it up in family is because his marriage is already unstable and I don't intend to make it worse. Story 6 I was once at a party for my nephew's birthday and really had to go. I noticed they had a basement bathroom, so while cake was being served, I dropped a deuce that could peel paint. I was able to sneak and slash out without anyone noticing. Fast forward to after the party and my SIL and BIL were complaining about two other family members clogging the upstairs bathroom and stinking up the basement. They complained that the smell lasted for days after that and it had to be professionally cleaned. To this day, they blame the other couple to the point that they get angry discussing the topic. TLDR, I'm a mystery pooper story 7. While addicted to meth, I accidentally got caught up working for a Nazi gang in my hometown. They were just having me smuff and collect money for them, but by the time I realized what they were all about, they weren't about to let me just stop working. So I kept doing it until I was able to leave my hometown and make it out to Tampa. The things I got involved in while working with them could put me in prison for 20 years. Most of my family think I lived a pretty normal junkie life back then, but they have no idea how easy it is to get involved with big name dealers in a town with such a high cartel presence. Story 8. My childhood friend has two siblings that he doesn't know exist, they're twins, around two years old now. I promise to keep it a secret, my dad and his dad are close friends. My dad is quite the gossip and spilled every last detail to me. Apparently their father, handsome, tall, a sports prodigy, slept with a doctor who lied about being on birth control so that she could give birth to his children, who she claimed had superior genetics. She was his former doctor who pulled up his private records in order to score a date with him as she had all his contact info at hand. Never wanted child support or even a father in her kids' lives, just an involuntary sperm donor. Very weird. Story 9 I secretly hate the super popular friend in my friend group as they are a one-upper. 
They are annoying, super intrusive, and not lying. They are rich and do everything. They have a one dot upper story and you know they are telling the truth. Oh yeah? That's awesome. Reminds me of when I went skydiving without a parachute. My partner jumped after me, clipped onto me, and pulled his chute. It was the most exhilarating experience. Let me have this Randall. Story 10. My interactions with people are almost 90% scripted just to fit in certain situations. I just picked up habits and routines of the people around me that I've noticed that work to be successful in human interaction. I don't care about anything and barely about anyone else. I enjoy company, but I don't need it. I do have friends and family around me, but I don't have a need for them in particular. Might be an undiagnosed psycho or something, but I do feel certain feelings. I wouldn't get good jobs or would not have friends if I acted my natural self. Probably would have been disowned by family. Story 11. I'm 40 and my parents have no idea that I never actually graduated college. I went for almost six years and never felt like I really knew what I was doing. School wasn't necessarily hard for me, but I just couldn't bring myself to focus or be dedicated to it. My parents were super obsessed with the idea that everyone needs a degree to get any decent job, so there was a ton of pressure and dropping out wasn't an option. So, I graduated in a winter semester and decided not to walk the stage since the December ceremony was always pretty small and I knew they wouldn't think that was weird. This happened to be during the recession in the 2000s so I had an excuse for not finding a conventionally professional job right after that. Now, I actually have a really good job with a company that focuses on hiring people based on experience, skill, and personality, so it turns out I didn't even need that degree. But I will never tell my parents the truth. Story 12 My mother and stepfather had a property they rented to a woman that was going through a separation from her husband. She and her soon-to-be ex-husband had two sons that went to school with me when I was still in high school. At this time, I was 18 or 19 years old, just having graduated high school. Anyway, the husband was constantly making accusations that she, probably 40 years old at the time, was somehow involved with every man she knew, including me. Truth is, she would report maintenance issues and have me come over and cream pie her like two to three times a week. Story 13 My problem is that I can't even tell my secret because I think any attempt at putting it into words or explaining it will just make people super confused and alienated. The thing is, I basically feel like there's a part of my brain that is handicapped and in some specific emotional contexts I can't behave normally. People always tell me I'm such a calm and nice guy etc etc but I actually have a pretty terrible temper and I'm super inarticulate if I'm pushed into certain situations. That's actually why I'm calm. I'm holding back the entire time. I'm trying not to show the side of me that people can't understand, that I'm 100% aware of and I have no idea how to deal with. I also can't be in any relationship long term. I can have friends who I see sometimes, but I can't live with others and do stuff day to day because I'm weird, basically. Story 14 Mine is that I truly hate my life, not only my friends, but my family as well. I hate the way they talk to me. I hate how dumb most of my friends are and the worst part is that I have been stuck with this feeling of hatred for 8 years and I don't see any escape from this life and I do really know what to do. I tried to find new friends but the people I meet are just as stupid or maybe even more stupid and I'm not even a person with high intellect I'm just in date with the newest information on. Earth and sometimes they call a geek for doing that and the worst part is that most of them know I feel this way and they just don't care at all. Story 15 Two separate friends' dads have made a pass at me, both while married to my friend's mothers. Like, overtly, one said he wants me desperately, and the other one started massaging my shoulders at a party when I was alone in a room and everyone else was in the backyard and said, You are so beautiful and tried to kiss me. Since both of my friends think their dads are amazing men and that their parents' marriages are great, and because I know our friendship would basically be over if I told them what their dads did, I doubt they would even believe me. I've kept it secret, but it really bugs me when they say they just want to find a good guy like their dad. Uh, he's not such a good guy. 